Welcome back. This is your favorite Decker, Bonsai here. We are headed to the Pike Place Market. So we caught a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market. An immersively quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are homes. For others, they're hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s overlooking the bay. Now, it's a market for all things legal and illegal. A melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. Yay. Oh, and I can pan the camera with WASD keys. Alright. So I need to find Coyote's boyfriend, Paco. I still haven't got into a fight of any type with my trusty dusty drone. Alright, Patrick, what do you gotta say? Patrick, the handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, completely undivided attention. Sir, you are a beautiful human, but you could be so much more. That sounds great! Tell me more! Wonderful! The Universal Brotherhood is a family of encompassing all metahumans, sexes, and sexualities. We all strive to be the very best we can be, or best we can, to live more fulfilled, happy, and productive lives, and to support each other in doing so. The first step is to simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. Please join us tomorrow, and the secrets to a better life shall be revealed to you. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. That just sounds awesome. Ka-ka! Ka-ka! Refurbished flowers, synth juice for sale. Stick. Sounds tasty. Oh, there's Maury's Meat Emporium. There's Nerps, whatever that is. There is a crime. Hopefully, it is not Coyote. I'll let you know a little secret after. Officer Landers. A tall, emotionless, Lone Star officer blocks entry to the crime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of the organ grinder's coroner, Dresden. This is an active Lone Star investigation. Please step away from the barrier. Let's see. I am here to see Coroner Dresden. And who might you be? It's alright, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to the barrier with a warm grin. The officer looks at you with a poorly concealed skepticism. Okay then, make it quick. That's right, bitch. Back off. What you got, Dresden? Let's try this again. What you got, Dresden? Thank you. So what brings you out here? Hot on the trail, the dead man's killer? Coincidence, believe it or not. I take it I've stumbled across another Ripper murder. Yeah, that's what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I gotta hand it to him. Our Ripper knows what he's doing, or she, I suppose. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. Dresden scratches his head absentmindedly, probably breaking some sort of sanitation protocol. She's been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the Stuffer Shack just around the corner. Looks like she was just leaving for work when it happened. Just take him from the top. Can you tell if she was subdued in some way before her eyes were removed? That's the strange thing. 
there don't seem to be any signs of struggle. Not a single bruise on her body, yet she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly thereafter. As to what knocked her out, I won't know until I can run some tests back at the lab. Let's see. I thought you ran the Redmond franchise. Isn't Pike Place a little far from home? Yeah, well, I don't really mind the change of scenery. Dresden laughs. The corner for downtown branch is out on maternity, so I told management that I'd cover for her on this one. Plus, I want this sicko caught. Any sign of magic use here? There was evidence of an unusual explosion in the alley where Sam died. Now there's an interesting thought. No. Nothing obvious, though. I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call in a full magical forensics team, though. Just to be sure. So... Ripper takes Sam Watts' liver in this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort. Trophies of some sort, I suppose. Probably, probably of some symbolic significance to the killer. Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. Ten of questions. Thanks, Dresden. Hey, I figure if I help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants so. the Ripper in a cell? Sure, but he doesn't care less if it takes another dozen murders. Good luck out there, eh? Dresden starts to turn back to the body and then stops. Speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get going soon before he shows up. Yeah, well, let me first check the body. Lying on the pavement is the body of a young human female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out and you notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. I don't know who the person is. Officer Aguirre, Aguirre, or somebody. Officer somebody, the plain clothes Lone Star officer before you sports a tacky hat and a crooked grin to match. So you're the one who's working for the dead man, eh? McCluskey warned us you might be sniffing around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Oscar somebody. Pleased to meet you. Now, seeing as this crime scene is going nowhere fast, what can I do for you? What can you tell me about the murder that took place here? Not much, really. We know it was about three hours ago, and we know that her eyes have been surgically removed. Didn't need Dresden to figure that much out. He's been looking at the body, though, so he might have more. Me, I've been scanning the rest of the scene and looking for witnesses, but no luck so far. Damn Ripper might as well be a ghost. I take it you and McCluskey don't s exactly see eye to eye. Let's just say McCluskey and I have conflicting interests. Hmm. Alright. Do you have any leads on the Ripper that I should know about? Ha. Plenty, if you ask McCluskey. Truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Thanks for your time, officer. Hey, hold on a minute there. You haven't put in a donation for the Lonely Orphans Fund. Great. The Lonely Orphans Fund? Yeah. See, you make a contribution to the fund. I put you on a list and let you know the next time we find any orphans that you might be interested in. Let's see. So you want a bribe. Actually, we'll just play his game. Well... I'm always interested in finding out about any new orphans you discover. Excellent. Shall we say 300 new yuan? How about 100 new yuan would make a big difference for an orphan these days? Yeah, well, some orphans have more expensive taste than others. 200. You can take it or leave it. We'll pay him the 200. Excellent. I'll start an account for you. You get any useful new leads on the Ripper, I'll give you a call. Now, I better get back to work before McCluskey shows up. See you around. Who is this elf? Okay. The elf standing before you may quite possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, formant jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. 
He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire? Do you know which organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Hmm, who's asking? The elf giggles, a strange high-pitched warble you would not expect to emerge from his misshapen face. Oh, I'm no one of consequence. Never mind that, though. Good evening to you and your friend the coroner. Hmm. Alright, so I got me... Karma. Do you got anything else to say, Dresden? Need something else? Any fascinating new leads? Yes. What about the bite marks on their arms? Ah, completely unrelated. Here's some wild dogs dragged the body out here from the alley sometime after her death. Hmm. Did you notice a particularly ugly elf standing over there in the crowd earlier? Huh? Where? Dresden scans the spectators surrounding the crime scene. He's gone now, but he was asking about the body, wondering, wondering which organ grinder's facility will be taken to. Interesting. Well, there's some of those who might be interested in purchasing some of her parts, sure, but that's a pretty poor, for, pretty poor form to inquire the site of a murder. An ugly elf, eh? Keep an eye out. Shouldn't be hard to spot if he comes back around. So, Sergeant somebody over there seems pretty friendly. Can I trust him? He chuckles. Yeah, it sounds about it, right. Any opportunity to get in McCluskey's way, he'll take it. A bit sleazy, sure, but I'd take a somebody over McCluskey any day of the week. Thanks, Dresden. Any time. So, why do, can you still talk to him? Alright. We're done. The orc before you wears a standard Stuffer Shack employee getup. The uniform is well kept and well fitted, but the tears streaming down his large crooked face do little to improve his appearance. He does not seem to notice your approach. Take it you knew the victim? Yeah. What's it to you? My condolences. Were the two of you close? Thanks. Sorry, we're just not used to folks being too friendly around here. York wipes away some tears away with a dirty napkin. Yeah, we were pretty close, as co-workers go. Blind Lucy and I worked here at the shack for three years together. Started on the same day. Here we go. Blind Lucy? Well, Lucy wasn't completely blind, but she was legally blind. She had to wear these huge glasses and hold things right up to her face, but she got new eyes about a year ago. Any ideas how she scored him? No, she wouldn't talk much about it, just called it her stroke of good luck. I guess that luck ran out. Seen anyone strange in the store lately? I see weird stuff every day. It's a stuffer shack. But no, nothing stranger than usual. Did Lucy have any enemies? Well, I'm not sure, but I know she had an ugly breakup with her boyfriend after getting those new eyes put in. That guy was pretty upset for some reason and wouldn't leave Lucy be until she filed for a restraining order. That all seemed to die down a while ago, though. When's the last time you saw Lucy? Here at the shack, earlier today. I think she was heading to the market to meet a friend. Hell, I was going to join her on my way home, but we got some last-minute customers. He sighs. That's all I needed to know. Thanks for your help, and I'm sorry for your loss. Wait, you wouldn't have to be part of the investigation, would you? I am. 
Why? Well, Lucy had this necklace. An intricate little carving of a dragonfly on it. Wore it every day. Said her mom gave it to her when she left Denver. Anyway, you know how Lone Star is. All her stuff will be bagged and placed in heaven in storage until the seventh world awakens. I just thought... Well, I just thought if you could somehow get that necklace back before Lone Star cleans everything up, I could send it back to her family. I feel like I owe her that much. Let's see, we'll be sympathetic and say, I understand if I can find it at the scene, I'll bring it to you. Thank you for your help, friend. You know where to find me. Yes, I do. Let's go over here. Talk to the junkie. Hey, guy. You have any extra noon? Just need some sucre zoom from the shack over there. He scanned the ground near Lucy's body and spotted a small wooden object, object mostly hidden beneath the dead woman's hair. This must be the necklace Frank was talking about. A thin broken cord trails off to one side. It must have snapped during the struggle. So I start to reach for the necklace. A slim black lone star boot slams down on the paint. And what do you think you're doing? Another 50 yen. Just reach it from our wallet. I'd like to make a contribution to the Lone Star um, Ralph Fund. I see. Well, thank you for your contribution, Sisson. Don't forget that necklace you dropped. The officer smoothly pockets your money and turns away. You pick up the necklace. It's an intricately... It's an intricately carved piece of wood in the shape of a dragonfly with small turquoise stones set within its eyes. The wood feels very sturdy for its weight. With genuine wood such a rarity in the sixth world, this piece must be worth quite a bit to the right buyer. find Lucy's necklace. Here you go, dude. As he takes the necklace from you, you can sense a weight lifting from his, from Frank's shoulders. Glad I can do this much for Lucy, at least. Thank you, friend. I owe you. Happy to help. Still looking for Paco. And we found Paco. Look, the kid in front of you sports the trademark yellow of the Cutters gang. 
Young, clean-shaven, he stands like his own, like he owns the street and every on, everyone on it. He seems distracted, though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks you over as you approach. Watch yourself, what you want. Let's see, are you Paco? <laughs> yeah, might be. Who the hell are you? I'm the one who's going to pretend you have better manners. I need to find Coyote. And I need you to tell me why you think that's my problem. I'm not her boss. Find her yourself. I was just at the Union. She missed two shifts and Miss Kubota hasn't been able to reach her on her comp. The tough guy swagger seems to drain out of Paco. The cutter is gone and before you stands a kid in a yellow jacket that doesn't quite fit. Coyote's missing? Oh man, that would explain. She was supposed to meet me here over an hour ago. Look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? If she's missing, I need to find her. Let's see, do you know a fixer named Mr. Delilah? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. I know of him, sure. Blake doesn't allow any cutters to take side gigs, though, so I got no reason to deal with him. Coyote hasn't said anything about taking new work. Wait a minute. Drek, I know where she went. Damn, why couldn't she wait? Damn it. Alright, slow down, Paco. Where did she go? The Royal... The Royale Apartments. The landlord, Stevie J, runs a drug ring out of that hellhole. Coyote grew up there, doesn't like to talk about it much. She's been looking for a way to settle the score with that guy for years. A few days back I heard Mr. Delilah was looking for runners to steal some sort of item out from under Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job. I'm sure of it. And if this thugs Connor, there's a grim determination in Paco's eyes. I'm going over there. You coming? Well, she's my only lead. Don't worry, I'll get her back. One more thing. Let's talk about this. Coyote had a receipt for some zebra meat from a place called Maury's Meat Market. Ever heard of it? <laughs> zebra meat? What? Look, that shop's just down the block if you want to check it out. But I'm going to the Royale, with or without your help. What's it going to be? I'll help you get Coyote back, but you better be able to handle yourself in a fight. Things might get ugly. Of course I know my way around a fight. Stevie J better be ready for a world of hurt. Paco curls his hand into a fist. Now let's get moving. The Royale is just a few blocks from here. Alright. Let's find... Let's go back to Maury's. But first... We got six points. Let's get karma -rific. Small meat stand presents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow and canine to the exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand features much older versions of the man in front of you. 
Manny. As soon as he notices Paco, the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? You know we can't afford more. Relax, man. My friend just has questions. You must be Maury. Do I look like a fat old man to you? I'm Manny. Maury's my dad. Now what do you want? I have this receipt for an order of zebra meat. Still have it for me? I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was going to come for it. Here, it's all yours. Do you know someone named Coyote? Nope. I don't go in much for the shaman stuff. What would someone want to buy zebra meat for? Some people eat it, but I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it to the corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazy for that stuff for some reason. Oh, dreck. That's why. That's why Coyote wanted zebra meat. Everyone talks about the pet hellhound Stevie J keeps locked up sometimes in the Royale. And if she never picked it up, whatever. Anything else? Yeah, what's your problem with Paco? Why don't you ask him? What the hell's that supposed to mean? means that your gang likes to stroll through here and relieve us merchants of our new yet. My dad stood up to them and he's still in the hospital. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of the cutter ranks anyway. I couldn't do dreck about that even if I wanted to. I'd tell that to my dad. I don't have time for this. We need to find Coyote. You're right, Paco. Let's get going. Because I was done with my questions anyway. <laughs> Where is the Royale? There be the Royale. Come on, guy. Let's go find Coyote. Yep, I'm ready. Alright, so that was a quick one. We found Paco, we got some zebra meat, we know it's for hellhounds, and then we're going in the Royale Apartments to go see if we can find um, Coyote. We're going to call it, we'll start it up at the Royale Apartments later. This is your Decker Bonsai, signing out.